Father, how do you find yourself in this almost new role uh, of, as, a, as, a, as a rector of, of the Gregoriano? Well, I find that the learning curve has been fairly steep in these last three months. Um, I was the academic vice rector here at the Gregorian for three years before I became rector, so I had a chance to, to learn the system a little bit. But a pontifical university is very different from the universities in the United States where I've, uh, where I, where I've been assigned before. How is it different? Uh, I think the, the, maybe the most important thing is there's, there's a, a much closer relationship with, with the papacy. There's a much closer relationship with um, the religious order that sponsors, in this case, the Society of Jesus. So uh, maybe a little bit more direction from above, but also um, very, very focused on theology. So this is the first university where the theology faculty is the biggest faculty in the university. The Gregoriana has a great history. Maybe you can tell us a little bit more, and you also as a historian, a little bit more the role of this university, of this pontifical university for the church, but maybe for society as a whole also in Europe. So we go back to 1553 and St. Ignatius of Loyola as the first general of the Society of Jesus, wanting to create a place in Rome where um, especially people from the newly Protestant Reformation countries could come and study Catholic theology and prepare themselves for ministry in the church, going back to those lands. So from the very beginning, the Roman college, which became the Gregorian University, was intended to be a place for international students from all over the world. The known world at that time was more Europe, but now it's, it's the entire world. How, how do you think uh, education and formation, especially also of uh, those who will go on to become priests, those who are already priests and, and, and study here, um, how will that change in, in this digital age we've entered in? The, <laughs> I think I'll start with the, uh, maybe what, what we want to do in a traditional sense with education, and that's to prepare people to think and dialogue, to be able to, to confront um, contemporary problems with their tradition um, so that they're able to, to c continue to carry forth the gospel. In the digital age, I think the challenge is how do we maintain that personal contact, the, the relationships that really make the faith, uh, help to transmit the faith, and not fall into the habit of just, just uh, passing everything on digitally. I, I think there was a temptation with the book as well but ultimately, people's faiths come from the people that they know. And uh, so the interaction, the personal interaction, is still very important. Yes. We're very happy, for example, this year to be back in presence after, after the years of COVID. And to my mind, what, where a lot of learning really happens are in the small breaks between classes, the breaks during the class time, where people can go out in the hallways and talk about what they've heard their own experiences from their local church and to begin to share the differences that they that they bring as they look at at the common theology the the gregoriana has formed has educated uh, thousands tens of thousands of priests cardinals and uh, and representatives of the church over the over the century what do you think is the most important or one of the most important things that people should take away um, other than just knowledge from studying here at the Gregoriano? I think for me the most important thing that Jesuit education in general and, and the university here tries to do is help people to learn how to think and learn how to think critically so that it's not simply memorizing facts or learning uh, by rote a theology, but beginning to delve into it and, and discover how these, this theology helps to answer questions that come up daily that are going to be different with each society and each age. To some people, studying theology is not associated with uh, thinking critically. How do you, how do you teach uh, students to think critically? And I think that's, that's a misunderstanding of theology. Mm -hmm. I think. Uh, there's, there's a distinction between memorizing facts uh, in a sort of catechetical, catechetical setting and beginning to do theology where you ask the deeper questions and also examine critically the answers. They're, understanding God is a mystery, so none, no, no theological knowledge is going to give us 
a cl complete understanding of who God is. So we, we have to keep coming back to it. We have to keep asking questions, going deeper to understand better um, what we know about God. How attractive is the, the, the Gregoriana today still to students? How many are coming to study here? Well, um, the current enrollment is around 2,500. Uh, we, we go between 2,500 and 3,000 um, from around the world. So it's not the, the biggest school in the world, but it's also, as an international school, one of maybe one of the better places to encounter that internationality. Um, I think we attract people who want to have an experience of Rome and the theology that is, is being done here. I think we attract people who are interested in, in examining that theology critically and, and asking the, the bigger questions. Asking the bigger questions, also teaching students how to think critically. Um, do you think the, the formation, the education also has to involve, evolve more uh, in, in, in the coming times, also the challenges we face as, as, as a society, as humankind as a whole? So I think, yes, I think the, the question of pedagogy is, is very important for, for every university, every school. Um, for the Gregorian, we have, have used a tradition that's much, much longer of, of lecture and, and oral exams, and it serves well, but I think the challenge is to continue to grow in, in, in different ways of delivering material, of, of being able to involve students more actively in the classroom. Of, of having evaluation more frequently. So there are a lot of things that, that we continue to grow and in, in even the way we deliver the course materials. And uh, in which, which direction is, is or what, what would you say, what are the important um, topics uh, for future priests or for, for future pastors also of their parishes um, to study and to learn? Well, again, going back to the Roman college uh, as a historian, a lot of times the answers are, are pretty close to the same. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that Ignatius wanted was to prepare priests who would be honest and w would have integrity in their life that would then become an example to, to uh, confront the Reformation. And so there was a real sense of, of creating people who were smart, who knew their theology, but also lived their Christian faith in a way that would be a, a good example. I don't know that that has changed so much. And in fact, I think in our age, there's a need to, to have priests who are transparent, who are honest, who live their values and their lives with an integrity that attracts people to the church. So a lot of the values that are being taught here, of course, um, remain the same over the ages. Uh, at the same time, you also engage in very, let's say, modern or current topics. Uh, artificial intelligence is one example. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? So um, we, we have one theologian who's, who's working on that and, and one philosopher. And it, it opens many questions as to, to how, what kind of implications that has for, for human intelligence if, as we become more reliant on artificial intelligence. Another aspect, though, that I'd, I'd like to move in besides artificial intelligence is dialogue. We, we are more and more aware that we live in a, a, in a global community, in a, a world where we have to interact with people of, of different religions, different faiths. And so the challenge is how do we do dialogue with people who believe differently from us in a way that allows us to move away from violence, move away from misunderstanding towards finding the, the things that we hold in common, especially the, the common values that help us to create a world society. And how do we do that, if I may ask? Well, I think, I think it begins with knowing our own values and our own identity better. Um, almost every experience we've had of, of interreligious dialogue here at the Gregorian University has ended with people coming away with a better understanding of their own faith in a way that allows us to, to be appreciative, uh, appreciative of and aware of the, the important things that we've received from our own faith. And then to share that in a way that doesn't threaten, but then allows others to find those same values in their own, in their own religion. Allow me uh, also a bit more personal question. Um, you are a historian. Uh, in our day and age, uh, what do you think are the lessons we should learn from history? I think history is always intends to give context. If we don't have history, we, we often wonder, well, why are we doing this? And, and the tendency is to say, well, we've always done it this way, therefore 
we have to do it this way. I think in the end, history liberates us by reminding us that there were other times and contexts that called for different answers, for different ways of, of living and, and behaving. And so I think we're called as, as historians to give people an idea that, that there are options, there are ways of, of living our faith that, that have to change from age to age. Thank you very much. Thank you for your, for your time also. Uh, is there something that, that you would like to bring in also when we speak about the um, Gregoriana and, uh, and, and, and this university? One of the things that I've, I've said is we, we are blessed by having very good students being sent here by, by various superiors and lay people choosing to come here. And I think the challenge for a university that, that gets good students is to help them to grow and be open to new ideas, new ways of looking at what they've already learned and what they've already experienced. And I think being able to reflect well on their, their past experiences and form new ways of, of, of understanding their theology is, is our goal. Is there, is there um, could you maybe describe the ideal student of this pontifical university where, where you say, well, we're looking at actually for people like that? You know, I think no, because one of the things that we're blessed with at the Gregorian University is a real diversity. There's a tendency to say, well, a good student has this kind of background. But when you're in an international context, you have to realize that people coming from Africa or Asia or South America or North America have very different experiences from those from Western Europe or Eastern Europe. They've learned different things. They have slightly different philosophies. They've even experienced their Catholic theology in a different way before they arrive. And so they each bring those experiences in a way that if they say this is the only way of thinking would limit them. But if they begin to encounter others and say, oh, maybe I can bring something back from this exchange, then there's, there's actually a within religious dialogue, which I think is, is very fruitful and happens here at the Gregorian University. If you allow me also, uh, in, in connection with the religious dialogue, is, I mean, uh, especially uh, from, from the very beginnings, the Society of Jesus with Ignatius, with Fra Francis Xavier, has, has always been very um, missionary uh, active. Like there was a, a big notion of, of, um, of missionary, um, not activism, but, but, but really going out into the world and uh, uh, bringing Jesus to, to the people, to the different nations. Um, now the nations are coming here. Uh, how, is this, how is this evolving? How is this developing? So again, as a historian, if you go to the Church of the Jesu, yeah. the Jesuit Church here in Rome, you'll see two statues on either side of the tomb of St. Ignatius. One is faith overcoming paganism, the missionary uh, enterprise, where there's the idea of bringing the Christian faith to people who have not heard it. And, and the new dicastery for evangelization, the, the evangelization of peoples. And that is presenting the gospel. But on the other side, then there's faith overcoming heresy. So the idea of bringing Christianity into more unity. And, and that was also a challenge in the time of Ignatius and is still a challenge. And it, and it keeps going back to a kind of dialogue. 16th century, the dialogue was often interrupted by wars, by violence. If we can come to a dialogue in our contemporary, contemporary age where we can, can dialogue and learn and better understand the faith that we share, then I think we're, we're living the values of that, that early university. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.